Welcome back there, students. It's time for a little bit more learning on the internet from me, your teacher, who's also going to be referring to myself as uh, not as him, third person, be confusing. Weird intro, don't worry about it. Today, we're going to talk about our final form of bonding, which is hydrogen bonding. However, in order to understand hydrogen bonding, we must first uh, remind ourselves about covalent bonding. Remember, in covalent bonding, remember that is when we are sharing one or more pairs of electrons between atoms in a molecule. So if over here is my friend and yours, a molecule, notice we have two atoms, and right there we are sharing these electrons. Also, good to remember that sharing is caring. Aw. But, like the picture says, not all sharing is equal. And when we do not have equal sharing, then we're not having the electrons being in the same place always at the same time. That's what we mean by not equal sharing. When this sharing is equal, we call this a non-polar covalent bond. You'll notice both these atoms look like they've got the same size nucleus. They both have the same number of electrons. So we can assume unless there were ions coming into play that this is, is the two of the same elements. So they're sharing equally, right? No one's gonna, gonna win the, the fight that we've talked about earlier. However, when we look down here at oxygen versus two hydrogens, when we look at this lovely Bohr model, we can see that uh, oxygen being much larger, it's also farther up there in the periodic table, uh, it's got a lot stronger pull on those electrons. Anytime you got an atom with a really strong pull on the electrons and then wimpy little atoms like hydrogen with a pretty weak pull on electrons, the sharing will not be equal. Just like it wasn't equal between me and my brother when we were in the sandbox with the Tom trucks like yeah yeah we're sharing mom only I'm playing with them 90% of the time and then every once in a while I let my four-year-old brother like touch a Tonka truck okay as a result of this unequal pull this unequal sharing the electrons will be spending more time up here with oxygen because the electrons are negative it's gonna leave this area up here partially negative and we'll represent that by doing a little squiggly doodle that means that's a lowercase Greek s by the way this ends partially negative and then down here where the electrons are not spending most of the time they just come down every once in a while because we've got this positive nucleus down here still this end of the molecule will be partially positive and then just like on a magnet where you have two poles a positive end and a negative end or even a battery which works uh, similarly having a positive end and a negative end so you've got these two poles created in the molecule that is why we call it a polar covalent bond see there's a partially negative charge here that gives makes that end negative just like on our magnet this end down here where the hydrogens are getting less access to the electrons is partially positive and so so as a result, we've got our two poles. That's why they call it a polar covalent bond. Yeah, let's see what they're doing there. As a result, we can get atoms that form a hydrogen bond. Here's how this works. It's, first off, it's not really a bond. What it is, though, it's an electrostatic attraction. That, that means, you know, there's electrons and protons, electricity involved. We can just go with a weak attraction between molecules, but usually with a lot of hydrogen atoms in them. The reason why it has a lot of hydrogen atoms is because hydrogen is pretty wimpy. It's like the four-year-old with the Tonka trucks. It's not got a very strong pull on electrons. So we're going to have unequal sharing or polar covalent bonds. And when we have these polar covalent bonds. Uh, hydrogen is getting what we consider the short end of the stick because it's not really getting to spend a lot of time with those electrons. Aw, poor hydrogen. Here's the same water again. We've got our oxygen, we've got our two hydrogens, but what they're showing here with these positive and negative ends is when oxygen is hogging all those negative electrons, we end up having a little bit negative charge here on the ends of the oxygen where the electrons are spending more time, and a little bit what's called a partial positive charge here on the end with the where the hydrogens are same thing down here we have another water molecule big old oxygen here in the middle two hydrogens at the ends and the hydrogens again have a very weak pull so the oxygen is really like hogging these electrons and as a result we've got a partial positive here where the hydrogens are a partial negative here where the oxygens are. See, so it's lined up just like on the previous slide we were just talking about a minute ago. And as you can see, on this end of the molecule, we have a slightly negative charge, slightly positive charges here. Here we have a slightly positive charge. 
slightly negative charge up here on the oxygen and opposites will attract. So this molecule of water will be slightly attracted to this water molecule, which is one of the reasons why water has really good surface tension. Also why it's a, it's sticky, right? It sticks to things where you didn't think water was sticky. Go ahead, stick your finger in like a, a glass of water. Try to pull it out without water getting stuck to it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's hydrogen bonding. It's not really a bond because it's not really attaching the molecules to each other like really aggressively, like we think of with a covalent or an ionic bond. It is a partial attraction. If this molecule starts going this way, this molecule is gonna get pulled along with it. Just like how you could uh, use a magnet to drag cars around on a toy track back in the day uh, before like microchips were we're awesome in every way. That is a hydrogen bond. I sort of think of it like, um, like, like this is like your crush. You're at, you're at the dance, and and here's you, here's your crush, and you're, you know, you're there, you're with your friends, and and your crush is there with their friends, but you know, you sort of notice like, oh, they, they're going over there, and like, hey, hey, everybody, let's let's sort of let's let's sort of just go over here a little bit. You know, you're dancing over here, you're dancing over here, and then all of a sudden your crush is moving over there, and you're like, oh, you know, this is sort of like, what if, what, like this part of the dance floor like seems kind of cool, right? You're just sort of being near them in a, in a not creepy way, all right? Not like a stalking weird way, just like a, you're sort of attracted to them. You guys aren't really talking or anything. Maybe something will happen, maybe nothing will happen, but either way, you're, you're going you're going with them as a partial attraction, just like in a hydrogen bond. So now you understand all the different types of bonding. Keep in mind that in order of strength, in water, covalent bonding is our strongest then ionic bonding and hydrogen bonding is the weakest. We can break it very easily and that's going to be crucial for how these molecules will interact with each other in the real world. Thanks for watching everybody.